Welcome back to another episode of Card Talk, a podcast where we spend just a little bit of time talking about cards from Lord of the Rings Card Game. I'm your host, Dave Walsh. And I'm Ted Bannock, and I love talking about ZZ Top. <laughs> oh, yeah? And we're going to have a great episode, because we're going to be talking about ZZ Top today. We are? Yeah. Today's... Uh, sharp-dressed man? And double back. Is that a ZZ Top song? <laughs> It's a ZZ Top song. Oh, which I, we... <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. I'll, I'll, I will provide some more. Um, you provide some the historical music. background. Uh, okay, great. When we talk about the card theme, we'll be yeah, like, exactly. "Oh, there's these guys with really long beards." <laughs> and then one guy who without a beard, beard, and his last name is beard. Is beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, we got a good show. Yeah, we do have a good show. So, uh, uh, before we get into the card, let's talk a little bit about how people can uh, uh, partake of uh, Card Talk. We do have the audio feed and the video feed, so you can see us uh, if you're if you're just looking at us on YouTube. You can go to our audio feed and catch us on a on a on a podcast player. We're all over the place. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcast from, we're, we're on there. But uh, if you're only getting us on the podcast side, you can come to YouTube and search up Card Talk L-O-T-R-L-C-G. And we're, we're, we're there and you can see the cards that we're talking about, uh, which is always good. One of the inspirations for the show is uh, being able to see the cards that people talk about. Um, uh, we do have a blog, so you can go see the blog over at cardtalk2018.com. And Matt is writing an article that's keeping up with the um, every uh, every card that we review. He's he's been on a tear of going back through some of the old stuff and reviewing some of the old the old uh, cards that we talked about. And then we so have let's a say that he's doubled back. Yes, he's already done that. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, we have a live playthrough that, uh, Micah has been doing. So we call that second breakfast where, he, you know, it's Sunday, lazy Sunday, and you want to enjoy a second breakfast. You go and listen to Micah and interact there. And he does all sorts of cool things over there too. So, uh, you get card talk in a lot of different ways. So, but at the core of card talk, you know what we do? We talk, we, about we talk about cards. cards. Yeah, yep. yeah, we do. And sometimes yep. rock bands from the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we'll go ahead and add uh, Double Back by ZZ Top, which... Um, to the Card Talk playlist. <laughs> the Card Talk playlist, which I'm familiar with it because of Back to the Future 3. Because it's uh, it's featured. They, they play like a version of it. And I think actually even ZZ Top cameos in it. I think they're the ones playing. I think they play it. As a matter of fact, I think they play it uh, in like Just recently, one of the um, members of ZZ Top passed away, too. I did not know that. Yeah, so. Well, it's funny news. Well, well, we attribute uh, Double Back to him. That's what I want to say. <laughs> That's what we can do. Yeah. Double Back is a spirit side quest. Uh, it's less harmonic. Uh, than this song, but it's a zero. It's a zero cost spirit side quest that has four quest points, and it's limit one per deck. It one per deck. It's victory one, like most side quests are victory, and has the response when the stage is defeated, reduce each player's threat by five. Mm. Bang. Yeah. Fiver. What do you think? What do you think of that? Think of that well, day? so. It's funny. Recently, I've been dabbling in side quests more and more, trying to figure out which which scenarios can. Yeah, if you go over to Vision of the Palantir, you can like Dan does a great job explaining like which quests need side quests, which quests don't need side quests, or you shouldn't run side quests. So, you know. But I've been I've been playing around, and I have a like a side quest deck that I built with Thurndeer, and uh, Double Back is really good even in solo to get that it's only four quest points which is the 
least of all the side quests. Um, there's several that are four, but then there's some that are five and some that are six uh, quest points. And, um, you know, and then there's only one other card that can reduce your threat by more, and that's the Glathrum's Greeting. And, you know, that's by six if you so choose. And But this is five for every player so if you're playing four play and I, i'm playing solo uh you know for people who know i play solo all the time uh except when it comes con time and then i play uh multiplayer i do play with friends online um at on dragon cards and what you you know octagon used to be a thing and so you know but uh you know mainly solo and i find that this card is really good <laughs> so um so I put three in a deck and call it a day. And then you lose? Break, and okay. then I break the rules because it's only limit one per deck. Ah, oh, grumpy, grumpy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I never put three three of these in a deck. But um, it's one of those things, like, you can get the side quest thing going because Thurndeer allows you to go search for a side quest and put it in your hand. Yeah, he's the, right? he's the lore hero that lets you search for one as a setup ability. Correct. Okay. And so you get a side quest. You can go get gather information, which is, I think, also limited one one per deck. And then you can go get... Um, and then with gather information, you can go get a second side quest. And then you're almost there. And if, you're, and if you build your deck right, you probably drew a side quest in your starting hand too, and then you can have your three, and then Thalion becomes a hero um, with with uh, res with the uh, with the resource match of all the side quests in the victory display. So you know, like it's um, that side quest deck is is fun to play. It doesn't it's not like a power deck by any stretch of the imagination, but it's definitely fun to uh, to get out there and and do a thing with. So um, and I think. Double back is particularly nice because you get to reduce your threat by five. It's yes, it's still a player card effect, so there's a lot of quests where you can't uh, reduce your threat by more than one, or you can't reduce your threat at all, or you know, like whatever. But you know, those those things off the side. You can even put this card in the in the staging area and not. You know, if you're just trying to get rid of cards in your deck, if you're playing the the that cycle that punishes you for having cards in your hand, you know, like you can put this in the staging area and just never travel to it. You know, like so I don't know, it's uh or tra it's not a location, but you know what I'm saying. Never claim never it as your yeah. active quest. Yeah, yeah, it's the active quest. So no. you know, I I don't know. So I like double back as a is it my favorite one? No, but it's probably. I, I guess there's only eight or nine side quests, but yeah, I would say that this is, you know, in the top half of them. You know, it's not a crappy side quest. It's not explore secret ways. That's for sure. You know, like <laughs> five. Well, five, five's a lot. Like five threat reduction is like that's that's noticeable to see your threat sink by five. Yeah, that's ten percent of your threat reduction your threshold you know? yeah. yeah right so yeah there's 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 and it caught co it cost zero to play as far as resources it just cost you the the turn of doing it as its real cost um but there's so many scenarios in the game that are just like uh they just try to threat you out <laughs> like right. yeah be prepared to have a lot of threat raise and this is a great way to, to to combat it. And even though it's limit one per deck, what's really fun to do uh, multiplayer is it's not like limit one in play or limit one in the victory display. So you could have multiple players running one copy each and you could potentially complete it multiple times in one game that way. Right. You can double back and then triple back and then <laughs> triple back. And, <laughs> and yeah, there's... I I. I, there's so many scenarios in the game where it's like I'm gonna put him double back because I'm playing multiplayer, which usually means I refer to as three and four player, and this scenario requires threat reduction. Right, and it's a good, it's a great option for those scenarios where you want to, um, 
not where you, where you want a turtle. Quest? Yeah, like not do the active quest. Like um, the first one of the uh, of the Arid Mithrin box, uh, you know, where you have to quest exactly or you get something from the evil creatures deck or, you know, like, oh, you know, like uh, the, journey up the Anduin. Jur- journey up it, the Anduin, you know, like, so you pick a side quest and the, and, you know, you have a side quest out and then you can build up your board state a little bit before you have those evil creatures come out and you know like and not that that's specific to double back but double back gives you that threat reduction so that then maybe you're down below the threat threshold of of engaging a hill troll or something you know like you you give get the little bit more so you know and that's that's really good so you know it allows you to turtle sometimes when maybe the scenario isn't going to let you turtle you know side quests are not very good for the time cycle for the what is that the uh the isengard voice of isengard uh the ringmaker cycle ringmaker cycle the, the right fourth cycle and yeah like when you're dealing with the time mechanic right mm-mm. <laughs> side yeah. quest bad yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's times when you can sneak in a side quest when you know, like, oh, I'm going to, I know that I'm going to trigger the the time anyways, so I might as well just go to the side quest and get a side quest. But, you know, but, yeah, I mean, I know that we're talking generally about side quests as well, but uh, we, it, we really it, haven't it, talked much about many yeah. side quests. So, you know, as we've reviewed cards i think the only other one we did was explore secret ways way back in the beginning so you know double back i think it's a a great one so te- i i've been monopolizing here ted go ahead <laughs> uh, talk no uh, you, you made some some great points and i was i was curious to hear your perspective in as a solo player since you do that in a majority of your games uh because i think it has high impact multiplayer and you're saying it has impact low player counts so that just shows that it's you know we're both kind of saying it's versatile uh for player counts so but yeah there's tons of reasons to run it um and there's plenty of heroes who benefit or you know decks that benefit from having low threat it helps you stay in secrecy uh for example or if you're playing uh one of Dave's beloved hobbit decks (laughs) they want to have low threat right you lower your threat you get to trigger hero sam gamgee you get the trigger um uh lore pippin right because your threat goes down so you get to draw cards when you engage enemies so all kinds of great benefits and yeah it's downside is yep you you can only have one in the deck so you might put it in your deck and never see it ever uh (laughs) there's a couple tricks to finding it though if you're playing side quests so we'll just mention those Dave, you already brought up the hero, the lower hero that lets you get it at the beginning of the game. And then there is a a leadership event that costs one, and that lets you search your deck for a side quest. Right. It's called the Um, Dunedine Message. Dunedine Message. Thank you. So if you're running a couple of different side quests and you're running one or two copies of the message to help you go find those because you find it advantageous for the scenario, you can do that to play into the whole side quest mechanic which uh it, it is fun to do um so I, to bring up another example which uh i played nightmare hills of emin muil <laughs> yes and it was so fun to build decks for that because the strategy i found that worked best was Th- literally every card in the card pool that said something something side quest went into both player decks like all side quests in both player decks anything that gain a benefit lets you find legacy blades all that stuff right for uh, what reason explain for what in the, reason in that particular scenario it, it is similar to the base where you are trying to collect uh victory points from what i recall and you only have this one quest card and you can just do all the side quests and reap all the benefits with zero penalty. Right. And the victory points that you accumulate from the side quests, they actually counted towards winning the scenario because you had to reach X amount of victory points, Right. Uh, which there are other, other scenarios 
that require you to have X amount of victory points. And this counts as a victory point. Right. Uh, so you do get that. It's a smaller benefit, but it, it makes a difference in those scenarios. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's one less victory point you have to get, you know, from, like, from the deck. Yeah. From right, like the encounter right. deck. From the encounter it. deck, which is very temperamental to say the least. Right. Right. So it has some of those, those, it's like a really niche way, like a really, uh, like strategic way to like take advantage of this card. Uh, but it's, it, it's, it's neat to play for that effect. Right. But even just looking at it for its face value, like five threat reduction per player, there's value there. It's pretty good. Um, and I'm also thinking about like having what, like the cards that are triggered by side quests being in the victory display like East Road Traveler, right? Like, isn't that one of... East Road Ranger, right? When there is it... A... Oh, no, that's no. that's when it's committed to the side quest. You get yeah. plus two. Uh, the um, best one to match for this one is probably... I think it's Rider of Rohan. Rider right. of Rohan. That's the one I'm thinking of, that when it when there's a side quest in the victory display, it doesn't exhaust, exhaust the, quest. the quest, right? Yeah, it's th- and Rider of Rohan's spirit, so it's the same sphere. Right. And Rider Rohan's got two willpower and two attacks. You really take advantage of its double, its free questing by well, having the, two attacks. The Vigilant Dunedain. Also, like, it's is great side quest having, having a side quest, uh, having a side quest in the victory spell. Of course, it doesn't matter if it's double back or, you know, right. gather information, send for aid, explore secret ways, whatever it is. But, you know, like, that's good. And then Thalion, of course, right? Like... Yep, you mentioned that one. That's the one that I did. Yeah, that, that's the uh, one that's Caleb Grace's art, right? Mm-hmm. His, his uh, five year art in the game. This guy doesn't look like he's from Middle Earth. He looks like he's from Minnesota. Mid- Middle Soda. <laughs> <laughs> he's from Duluth. Duluth, Middle Soda. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah so- and then the Legacy Blade, of course, right? Yeah, Legacy Blade gives you plus yeah. one attack. Right. Uh, so when all three copies of Double Back go into the victory display from my deck. Right. <laughs> you need to <laughs> reap the plus three attack. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that caps out at. Right. But, and yeah. of course there's others, and I, you know, like, yep, I think just... Fast has some sort of side quest something or other, but I don't know. Yeah, so we're just kind of scratching the surface. There are several other cards, uh, but... Take a look into some of the ones that that we mentioned, and if you're if you're struggling with a scenario with threading out, this is a great addition to help with that. Even though it it takes away from the main scenario, the threat reduction can can be advantageous. The last thing that I will say, and Ted, maybe you have an opinion about this though, is um, I don't think that this is one of those side quests that you need to run in a um, in only a side quest deck. I think that you can put this into a normal deck where you need more threat reduction. Like it's just not coming to give you an extra card to, to try to draw into that gives you threat reduction. You know, like it's not, I, I think that this is a general use side quest. Yes. That's, that's what I was trying to say, but you explained it better. Uh, I was trying, <laughs> Oh yeah. Okay. It's, it's a, you have to look at it like it's a threat reduction card. So if you're struggling with threat, it's a great, you can only have one it's, it's like put it in. And if you happen to draw it, it can give you five reduction. Uh, so yeah, I can, I completely agree. All right. Okay. So um, what about the artwork on this guy? Oh yeah. Uh, it looks Okay, it looks it looks fine. You know, I don't it's really like the raven winged helm. It's a thing, and this yeah. is a picture of that thing. Of I don't thing. know. I don't get a sense that they're doubly back there. Is he trying to yeah. cover his tracks? Is that I, what... That's what I feel like is going on. I have to like zoom in actually, because and I feel like it's it's I've... supposed to be Aragorn, but it's kind of a cartoony version of Aragorn. It's the bracer on his arm. It's like the Gondor bracer or, you know, like it may be Boromir. I don't know, but it's, this isn't necessarily the photorealistic art that we're used to in this game. It's kind of, I feel like it's a little cartoony. 
A, a tad. I do like the landscape. Like it's got this, you know, so it looks like it's in like the northern realm of like Arnor right. or something like that with the some snow on the ground. Yeah. So it looks like it's uh, like a Duna Dane Ranger of some fashion covering their tracks. Uh, so I, if you ask me to do a better depiction of how someone doubles back, I could not do better than this. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> uh so i can't Qu- quick google to... search of double yeah, back <laughs> right well you get our you get our friends from zz top right uh, <laughs> now i kind of want to watch uh back to the future just watch the whole trilogy um, <laughs> so that's uh, okay so is that uh hmm i think i, f- I feel like there's a uh I, f- I feel like there's an alternate art opportunity here, like a, pr- a card talk promotion. Like oh, yeah. here's your double back and it's just a picture is easy top. Yeah. <laughs> we could probably do that with all the cards that we have songs for. Uh, Yeah. Right. Cause it tends to come into play. We tend to sing that we, we associate a card with a song. Yeah. Or at least <laughs> so, I would do right. Like, yeah, I still think the the winged guardian should be a picture of Hermione Granger with her wand out saying "Wingardium Leviosa." Right. You know, like yeah. I just think, anyways. But that's that's the other one that comes to mind. But uh, yeah, you know, like I'm sure that you could uh, alt art the crap out yeah. of this card. Yeah, if yeah exactly. You to. I mean, it, I don't think anybody's gonna miss the art on this one. You know. Yeah. This is my favorite art in the game. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ah, no, yeah. No. No. Yeah. But it's it's fine. That's fine. Yeah. So well, let's. Uh, should we ring this guy? Should yeah. Yeah. The double, let's, the double let's, ringer. Let's double back to what we were talking about and ring rate it. Yeah. Okay. So for anybody who doesn't know or maybe new to card talk, we have a highly scientific yet arbitrary system where we ring a card, where we ring a card on a scale from one to ten, where uh, one is the best card in the game, or the one card to rule them all. And uh, a ten is a card that we throw back into the fiery chasm from whence it was made, or not a very good card. So, um, Ted, I think you went first last time, so I'll go first this time. Um, so, here's the thing with with card types that have very limited, um, very limited totals like uh, side quests and um, uh, contracts, you know, like there's only eight or nine side quests, right? So I don't think side quests necessarily inspire me totally. So I have to kind of take these cards that are like limited, like um, the, uh, like the guarded cards, right? You kind of take them as it kind of in their own little, ranking system in my head because you you just have like eight or nine cards so you you want to kind of know which ones are the best ones and which ones are the worst ones right and so you know it's not like we're comparing it to all you know two thousand cards in the player card pool what? Just like card talk hosts. you want to know who's the best who's the worst where yeah online right 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 so um so with that like i think the double back like i said earlier is top half of the of the uh at least of the uh of the side quests so i think that i have to give this card like a four it's gonna go into some decks that aren't even side quest decks that just you know like it's just a good option i have this card in 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 a lot of my spirit decks you know especially that are monosphere spirit because yeah, you know when it's when it's you know mixed spirit or when it's a uh, bond of friendship spirit you know you're fighting for space because there's so many good spirit cards but you know if this is a if it's a monosphere spirit deck i think that this this card makes it in a lot of times so you know so i'm gonna i'm gonna give this card a four so ted okay uh yeah you raised a lot of great points um and I'm also giving it a four because it it's a lot of threat reduction. It just that that cost ratio of of zero resources uh, to five threat reduction. It's it's a lot. It's useful. Yeah, it it is limited to or you can only have one per deck. So you we named a couple ways to find it. Um, 
but it's it's very helpful. I I've used it. I've doubled back time and time again <laughs> to not thread out, and it it I think it seems to gain value to the higher player count. You know, it's mm -hmm. if you look at it when you're playing four players, like I paid no resources for twenty threat reduction. Right. Like that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um. So. Just keep in mind that side quest, their, their true cost is it is it cost you a turn, right? right? Which some sometimes is good, but sometimes it's bad. There's certain scenarios that side quests are terrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like if you're spending time on the side quest, you might you're probably going downhill because you're not accomplishing something that you yeah. that you're you need to do within a time limit it's it's a feel bad if you spend more than one turn doing a side quest that on, too on more than on you know if you don't do it on purpose right like you're like oh i'm gonna get through this and then all of a sudden you only get three quest points as opposed to four well, like, yeah uh, uh yeah and yeah. So, sometimes that that's okay depending on the scenario and sometimes it's really bad you're like now it's two turns to complete this so now you know if you take two turns now you kind of lost some of its potency and all that kind of stuff but right. uh give it a try if if you haven't but just be wary that certain scenarios it's it's not called for <laughs> yeah okay well there you have it everybody that's our in-depth amazing analysis of double back i don't know if it's amazing you know what's going to be amazing matt's blog review on this so go over to the blog and check out what matt has to write about this so i'm sure he's got like all sorts of combos figured out for what's going on with this so anyways everybody have a great day and we'll see you next week do you love the content here's what you can do to stay connected become a patron the money collected through patreon goes into keeping the lights on here at the podcast we love our patrons and you can join at many different levels visit patreon.com slash card talk 2018 you can subscribe to us, whether you're watching our YouTube channel or you're listening to us in your favorite podcatcher. Hit the subscribe button to get notifications of all our new episodes. Didn't know we were an audio podcast? Find us by searching Card Talk to get access to our 120 plus regular episodes. Didn't know we were a video channel? Find us by searching Card Talk, L-O-T-R-L-C-G on YouTube and there you can find not only our regular episodes, but you can find our bonus playthroughs and other content related to the game. Want to get a hold of Ted, Grant, or myself? Feel free to email the podcast at cardtalk2018 at gmail.com.